There are three kinds of lies. Lies, damn lies and statistics. And fertility clinic success rates fall into that last category. Now, fertility clinic success rates, which are also known as live birth rates, are statistics on how successful each clinic has been at helping couples have babies. So, knowing this, you may think that your best chance for getting pregnant is to find the clinic in your area with the highest success rate. Unfortunately, it is not that simple. And if you use success rates alone, you may end up picking a fertility clinic that is not right for you. You see, individual clinic success rates are influenced by a number of factors. Factors like the types of treatment they offer, the number of embryos the clinic routinely transfers, if the clinic has rules about who they will and won't see, specialisms of the doctors working there, and so on. These factors can distort a clinic success rate, making it appear to be better or worse than it actually is. And depending upon your personal situation, some of the factors may be far more important to you than the overall success rate. So if you want to find a fertility clinic that gives you the best chance of having a baby, then you want to take these factors into consideration as well. This is why we at conceptionadvice.com have put together this guide. It helps you to understand the factors that affect fertility clinic success rates, why they should be important to you, and how to use this information to help you select the fertility clinic that is right for you. Before I get into the factors that can affect fertility clinic success rates, let me first tell you how to find them. Now the best place, with usually the most up-to-date figures, is your country's fertility regulator. And the easiest way to access them is by looking them up on their website. For example, in the UK, the fertility regulator is the Human Fertilization and Embryology Authority. While in America, you can find your fertility clinic success rates under the CDC website in the section Assisted Reproduction Technology Data. For your own country, the easiest way to find the fertility clinic success rate is by simply Googling them. Enter your country's name, follow them by either the term fertility clinic success rates or assisted reproduction technology success rates. When you look at a fertility clinic success rate, the first thing you need to know is that they show how successful a clinic is overall. What they do not show though, is your personal chance of having a baby if you go with that clinic. So what do I mean by this? Well, let's say a clinic has performed 10 cycles of treatment and six of them have resulted in a baby. This gives the clinic a success rate of 60%, but it does not mean that if you go with that clinic, you will have a 60% chance of having a child each treatment cycle you receive. You personally may have a higher or a lower chance of becoming pregnant. And while one fertility clinic may be better at increasing those odds than another, it is what is causing your infertility that dictates your overall personal chance of success. An important thing to be aware of when looking at success rates is that not every clinic performs treatment in the same way. For example, some clinics perform IVF with reduced amounts of drugs, known as mild IVF. Some clinics even offer drug-free IVF, known as natural IVF. These clinics tend to have lower success rates. However, they also have lower rates of ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome, which is a potentially fatal condition that can be brought on by fertility drugs. Other clinics are known to specialise in treating specific conditions. For example, clinics that specialise in treating PCOS, or male immune response to sperm, or low ovarian reserve. Because of their experience in treating these conditions, these clinics tend to attract couples with more complicated fertility problems. Having higher numbers of couples with complex problems can cause these clinics to have lower success rates when compared to clinics that don't have a speciality. And some clinics treat women who are not infertile, but are using donated sperm in their treatment. These clinics tend to have higher success rates than those treating couples with infertility. By the way, if you have a particular condition and would like to find a fertility clinic that specialises in treating it, I cover that topic in the video, How to Choose a Fertility Clinic, a link to which can be found in the description of this video. Many countries publish fertility clinic multiple rates in addition to success rates. The multiple rate of a fertility clinic is the number of women who become pregnant and give birth to more than one baby at a time, i.e. have twins, triplets, quadruplets, or even more. 
Clinics that have a high multiple rate often transfer more embryos at the same time than clinics with low multiple rates. The more embryos transferred, the higher the chance the one will implant. This in turn causes the clinic to have a higher success rate, though it also means that women are more likely to fall pregnant with more than one baby at the same time. Having twins or triplets may sound like a good way to get the family completed all in one go. However, being pregnant with more than one baby at a time is the single biggest risk of fertility treatment for both mother and babies. It increases the chance of complications, including higher likelihoods of preterm births, placental problems, preeclampsia, and diabetes, as well as a whole host of other less common problems which you don't normally find with single pregnancies. Because of these problems, it is usually better for the health of the mother and the baby to choose a fertility clinic that has a low multiple rate. Some fertility clinics have eligibility rules. These rules often allow the clinic to refuse treating couples with certain medical conditions or lifestyles. Some common examples of these eligibility rules that you will come across are they won't treat smokers, they won't treat people who are overweight, they won't treat you if you are over a certain age, they won't treat women with low egg reserves, and doubtlessly you'll come across more rules. Now, by not accepting these types of people, the fertility clinic is purposely selecting couples that have a higher chance of having a baby. This stacks the odds in their favour, which will artificially inflate their success rate when compared to fertility clinics that will treat anyone. This doesn't mean to say that fertility clinics that don't accept certain types of people are bad. It just means that their advertised success rates may not be comparable to clinics that have a more open policy. And if you have a condition or a lifestyle that a clinic rules out, don't expect them to treat you. Some clinics perform lots of treatment cycles, whereas other clinics may only perform a few. The more cycles a clinic performs, the more accurate their success rate. The reverse is also true. The less cycles performed, the less accurate the clinic's success rate. Let me give you an example. Clinic A performs 100 cycles, and 55 of them result in a baby. This gives Clinic A a success rate of 55%. Clinic B performs 10 cycles, and six result in a baby. This gives Clinic B a success rate of 60%. If you just went by the percentages, it would look like Clinic B was the best, with a success rate of 5% more than Clinic A. Now imagine Clinic B's 10 cycles resulted in one less baby. Clinic B now has a success rate of 50%. This now makes it look worse than Clinic A. Because of the number of treatment cycles that Clinic B has performed, one or two births can have a very big difference to on their success rate. However, it takes a lot of births for the success rate of Clinic A to change significantly. Some fertility regulators take low treatment cycle numbers into account and post each clinic's success rates as a range. For example, instead of just saying a clinic has a 50% success rate, the regulator would say that the clinic has a success rate of 40 to 60%. However, if your country does not follow this practice, as well as checking a clinic's success rate, also check the number of treatment cycles performed. If a clinic has only seen a few patients, then its rating may not be as accurate as those that have seen a lot, though this does not necessarily mean the clinic is bad. So what am I trying to say here? Well, it's just that fertility clinic success rates aren't the be-all and end-all of selecting the right clinic for you. While I wouldn't completely ignore fertility clinic success rates, other factors may be far more important in helping you have a baby. This concludes our video on fertility clinic success rates. Good luck and all the best in the future. If you have found this video useful, please like it. And if you would like to see more fertility related videos, check out our YouTube channel. And why not check out our website, conceptionadvice.com. Here you'll find all the latest information, help and guides. Goodbye and good luck.